Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome to the second overview on new slam setup since the Dante update. I showcased Jadkatag last video and it was pretty nifty with what a little Emerald Shards plus Vulcan Blitz could do. Today we're going to be instead be looking at what increased slam radius allows the more ambitious hammers to do. We're going to be looking at Magistar and Karnon, with and without melee influence. Now you'd be surprised on how strong it is even without it. Today's showcase in theory crafting comes courtesy of some cool people from the Quasars clan. They're an active tryhard clan always hosting events and pushing operations leaderboards. You can thank them for the funny strat we're looking at. Feel free to check out their channels in the description and pinned below. And there's even a funny new disruption level cap short on the new Dante tile set. Let's get a full breakdown on what's going on here, shall we? There are three main setups today, one for minimal investment that is frame independent and can be used anywhere, one that dips a little bit more in synergies, and finally one that doesn't even need melee influence at all. Of course the influence variants are strongest, but Magistar has the slam radius for non-influence builds to still work extremely well at base steel path, which is a claim that Jadkatag cannot really take. It's time to see what makes Magistar tick so well. Now, this is an Incarnon weapon, so remember it needs to be farmed from Steel Path Circuit Mode on Duviri. The first evolution activates Incarnon Mode as an option at 6x combo or 100 plus counter. Its main benefit is granting faster movement speed via plus 100% sprint and parkour velocity, which is perfect for getting to your next victim sooner. Extra melee damage, which is always nice, and heavy wind-up speed, which only affects the recovery animation after a heavy slam. The initial combo isn't important on our first two builds, but will be handy for the non-melee influence third build later. Our perk 2, Crushing Verdict, only affects normal melee swings. The bonus falloff does nothing for radial slam attacks, heavy or not. Luckily, heavy slams still retain 70% of their damage at the edge as of this update, so it really isn't a big issue. Edge of Justice is taken because it makes it so much easier to build up combo as needed. Perk 3 is where the good stuff is though. This 100% bonus slam radius is the reason why Magistar is so competitive. It increases slam hitbox from 9 meters to 18 meters. However, since hitboxes overlap and enemies are 3D, it is still possible to hit enemies 20 meters away. Now, this increases the disc hitbox from 81 meters squared to 324 meters squared, or effectively 4 times bigger area. It's extremely apparent on how much a difference this makes when using Magistar slams in mission. There's literally no reason to use any other perks on this tree for slam builds because nothing can compete with a 4 times hitbox size increase. Now, perk 4 has some interesting notes. While this weapon is main impact weight, the slam is pure blast by default. It gains elements from modding but cannot proc impact on slam or heavy slam under any circumstances. Therefore, flashing bleed is completely useless here. Subtle force isn't needed because it's significantly weaker than our right perk, which grants the rare innate stat modifier critical damage. Alongside critical chance, this is how we get our juicy red crits. Now, some of you might also be asking, which one is better, the normal Magistar or Sancti Magistar? Don't worry, I got the math for you. Now, this is ignoring Rivens though, keep in mind. If you're going a raw damage build, then the Sancti Magistar is only 81% of the final damage that Magistar can pull off. But if you're going a status DPS build, i.e. melee influence, then the original dot hit of Sancti Magistar will deal 1.62 times that of Magistar due to having twice the status chance. For non-stat stick purposes, I would recommend just using the Sancti version. This is because the influence status variant is the only version that scales to endurance without needing to constantly apply armor strips. And even while being only 81% of DPS on raw damage, the Sancti Magistar obviously has enough damage to one-shot anything at base steel path on a corrosive build. So let's look at them. The first is a cookie cutter melee influence electric build that can be used on any frame, with no ability support or warframe arcane support whatsoever. TLDR can slap this on a pre rework in Arlson and will still kill everything even if you don't use a helmet. Things to note Zada's Whisper double dips stealth modifiers. Of course, slam buffs can be improved with, say, like Eclipse or Roar. Now, with slam damage, Seismic Wave. This applies twice when melee damage is present, i.e., prime pressure point. This means Seismic is actually giving plus 400% base damage instead. Prime Smite is used because it triple dips melee influence for 3.72 times more damage on Daunts. Nothing is gonna live this on base steel path as you're spreading 18 meter radius electric procs with barely any fall off, which can chain to each other. The build caps out at 273% CC, meaning mostly red crits. 
If you can squeeze on another format to Max Frank Gladiator might, feel free to do so, however, Blood Rush would let you skip this forma. But do be aware you only get the full effects of Blood Rush at 12 times combo instead of being able to slam at any combo for plus 440 CC. Discipline's Merit is our go-to for free heavy slams. Attack speed is not needed because the Evolution 2 grants plus 40%, and Magistar is a base 1.0 attack speed hammer already. Pure Electric obviously to activate influence, and while only 47.5% electric weight, it shouldn't be hard to proc due to the massive slam radius. The second build considers a couple more elements on your loadout. This build has slightly lower damage, but more forgiveness by itself. While I bring Tenokai, we still have 90% heavy efficiency, so it is okay to heavy slam by accident without it, or in situations where you don't have time to build combo. We gave up Gladiator Might and Prime Pressure Point for this, dropping crit chance to just 226.8. The base damage is now outsourced to Arcane Fury on our Warframe. We also bring Arcane Strike to make it even more comfortable to use, stacking with Evolution 2's plus 40% attack speed perk. Otherwise, the build is the exact same. I would also recommend slotting the two unranked Nero mods on your Warframe for plus 200% more slam damage if you can fit it since it applies twice to base damage. This will easily offset not bringing Gladiator Might, and the setup allows you to choose between using Tenokai to set up slams or spamming heavy slams repeatedly when needed. Notably, having crit mods on Magistar, unlike Jadka Tag, allows you to benefit from a higher damage cap per slam against Acolyte's Attenuation, which is further multiplied by the actual crit damage itself, and then obviously even further because of higher tier red crits. TLDR Magistar obliterates Acolytes. For the case of using Laval specifically, if you bring Valence Formation, you can use a Max Rank variant to infuse Electric. This allows you to bring Emerald Shards and Mod Sancti for Corrosive instead, replacing Shocking Touch for Primed Fever Strike. This weapon has a 108% status chance at 12 times combo with Weeping Wounds. Unlike Chat Katag's smaller original 9m radius slam hitbox, Magistar's 18m radius hitbox allows you to get enough Corrosive procs to reliably hit the 14 stack cap for 100% armor strip without needing to rely on force procs from Valence Formation. And Fusing Electric also gives you the best chances at activating melee influence consistently, giving you the best of both worlds for DPS armor strip and consistency in activation in one single hammer. Now the third variant is unique to increase slam radius hammers and can be used on any frame. These setups allow you to get enough DPS in a big area to make up for not having scaling status DPS via influence. Magistar has both much higher slam radius and access to red crits, which Jat Katag does not. This allows a non-influence build to still destroy at base steel path without needing armor strip, priming, or any other ability buffs in particular. I would personally recommend melee crescendo because the damage is so high per hit that duplicate is not needed and also would not really work with the higher tier crits. Crescendo also allows you to spam 12 time heavy slams back to back without needing to worry about max combo dropping each time. Technically, you can use Exposure, but I feel the free access to 12 times slams forever is better. We still opt for 90% heavy efficiency because this allows your combo to recharge from 198 instead of 0, taking only fractions of a second to reset to 12 times. Tenokai is entirely optional, serving only to let you heavy slam without losing combo before building Crescendo up. Crescendo can be easily stacked with using Ragdoll grouping tools and pressing melee over their bodies, such as Airburst or Larva. This allows you to ground finisher multiple enemies at once, all counting for crescendo stacks. Because Master's Star and Karnon also grants plus 30 initial combo, you only really need to get 190 crescendo stacks. I'm using a rank 2, which requires 64 finishers in this setup to hit 220 overall, and that only takes about a minute at most to achieve. I would still recommend to bring two Nera mods on your Warframe since they apply twice the base damage like Seismic Wave, allowing these to grant plus 400% melee damage instead. Arcane Fury and Arcane Strike can go a long way to boost damage even further and feel even better on swings if needed. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I've been doing with the Dante update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.